Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are gonna go over a topic that I encounter all the time. And we're gonna be talking about some of the, the CAM crankshaft position correlation codes that you see on the BRZ, the FRS, the 86 whichever FA20 car you're gonna be using, including the WRX as well and the DIT. And you see this kind of thing all the time. A lot of people spend a ton of money on their car, built motors, everything, and then they run into this problem and it's just uh, it's a big old pain in the butt. But uh, I'm going to show you how you can actually troubleshoot this so you can get an idea as to what you possibly can do uh, about this kind of situation. So what we want to do is actually take you to our data log here. And I'm going to show you a couple of more of these parameters. That way you can kind of see the whole thing that we're looking at. And basically what we have here is all the cam positions and the commanded positions. We have this for both the exhaust and the intake cam. And I'm gonna work my way from the bottom up here. So what you have is the intake target, uh, and that is this one down here. And then let me click on it so you can see the cursor. All right, so you have the intake target down here, uh, your actual intake advance. Then we have your VVT exhaust retard. And then what you see, this is actually sampling number one. This isn't average or anything like that. And then you have your VVT exhaust angle targets and the actual angles. <clears throat> so what I want you to pay attention to here is I'm going to first away, first take away some of these extraneous ones. We don't really need to see this one here or this one. And the targets are going to be the same uh, for both cylinders. So we can eliminate some of those as well. So if we look at the intake, what we see here is there's our angle matching up to our target pretty nice right here. Uh, so we took off the intake target, but if we put that back on, you can see there's our target and there's our actual VVT intake and it's pretty close. So we have a 36 here, commando, we have 36.3. So that sounds pretty good to me. I don't see any problem with the intake, but as we go up here to the exhaust, this is where it starts to become a little bit more obvious. And what you can see here is if you look at this top one, you actually have a much more dampened waveform compared to our target and exhaust number two. And this was actually a problem with one of those small solenoids around ones in the very front. And what they do is they're pulse width modulated. They will, uh, they will push in activating the small ball on the cam gear which allows the passage of oil and then thus the commanded uh, commanded uh, exhaust uh, angle here. Now what we typically see on these older ones is if you're lucky this is what you get if you're lucky. If you're not lucky then you're going to have other problems uh, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute here but just changing out the solenoids we had a substantial improvement and this was the subsequent log that you see here. Let me change my screen and here you see our uh, commanded exhaust angle right there and you see both of them are now reporting pretty much the same. Uh, so the way you troubleshoot this the easiest way is you really need to take one of the solenoids or actually preferably just swipe them from the left side to the right side, driver to passenger, whichever way, uh, or you can actually just uh, change them top to bottom. And if it's one of those solenoids, that's the problem. What will happen is this will actually move this problem, uh, problem area. Uh, but the problem one is going to end up moving. And that is uh, going to tell you then that those solenoids are faulty. Luckily, those are pretty cheap. They are only about a hundred bucks through the dealer and you can uh, then change them out in about 15 minutes and you're good to go. The bigger problem though is when the actual cam gears are having issues. And especially if you have an older BRZ or an E6, you're gonna much more likely see this to be the problem. If it does happen, it's not the end of the world. The cam gears, I would just buy them new. I would probably not take used ones because again, you're, you're taking a chance there and the labor is going to be pretty expensive on this because you got to pull the front cover off. They're a real pain to seal, uh, seal correctly with the, the engine in the car, especially if you got to pull the turbo off to do it. If it was my car, I was paying labor. I'll probably change out all four gears. Yes, it'll be 400 bucks a piece, but you're not going to have to worry about them for a hundred thousand miles. 
The other thing you have to be careful is if you rebuilt your motor or somebody rebuilt your motor for you after a spun bearing, what could be happening is that you could have had the little filters, there's little filters, little, they look like thimbles, uh, that go into the oil passage for the cam gear. And if those are a problem, uh, if they were never replaced or cleaned out, then that could be your issue. You could be not getting enough oil pressure to the actual gears. The other thing is there is a TSB out, and that TSB is specific for this kind of an issue. It involves changing out the cam gears and also replacing the ECU. It's a pain, uh, but you can go that route and change everything out, and hopefully that'll be the end of those issues for a long, long time. Uh, the one caveat there is you're going to need to transfer your tune and license from your old one to the new one. That could be arranged. Acutech super straight about this. Uh, they'll, as long as you get the documentation that it was done, they'll usually give you a ROM to flash to remove the license. And then we can go ahead and put your old tune right back on and get that going. Uh, so that is worst case scenario. Uh, hopefully that's not the issue if you guys are looking. Uh, so that is pretty much all I got on this topic. Now, one thing I want to say is the, the codes that you are going to get for this, they can vary. Uh, there are the P008 uh, uh, through D. There's the, the 016 through 019. Those are much more common to see because they're just typically what will pop up. And when you do get those, uh, this should be your first step before you start blaming the tune or you start trying to chase electrical issues. More often than not, it's gonna be either the solenoid or your cam gear. Uh, for the ECU, one other thing you can try is if you have a buddy with a same year car as you, you can actually take your ECU out, uh, flash it back to stock, put it into their car and, uh, and just power cycle it. Uh, we've had it happen where a customer did that and it actually put the ECU into some kind of a mode where it reset itself and it started relearning the, the replaced cam gears because uh, they did replace them in the car. Uh, and thus they didn't need to do the actual ECU replacement. I haven't had anybody really try that, so I can't say how much that'll work, but that is something else you can try. So that's all I got today. I'll see you guys out there.